Hi, welcome back to Recitation. We've been talking in lecture about antiderivatives. So I have here a problem for you, just an exercise about computing an antiderivative. So the question is to compute an antiderivative of this big fraction. So it, on top it's got x to the eighth plus 2x cubed minus x to the two thirds minus 3, that whole thing over x squared. So uh, just a, a quick linguistic note about, about why I said an in antiderivative instead of the antiderivative, and then I'll, I'll let you work on it a little. So an antiderivative, there are many functions whose, whose derivative is, is this function, right? So, so they all differ from each other by, by constants, but, but um, so you know, I would be happy with any one as an answer to this question. That's why I chose the, the word an antiderivative and antiderivative. So I'm looking for a function whose derivative is equal to this function. So why don't you take a couple of minutes, work this out, come back, and you can check your answer against my work. OK, welcome back. So we were just talking about uh, this antiderivative here. So one thing you'll, you'll notice about this function is that I've written this in a sort of silly form. And it, it's probably a lot easier to get a, get a feel for what this function is if you, if you break this fraction apart into its several pieces. So for example, x to the eighth over x squared is just x. So well, OK, so let me. So this, this antiderivative that I'm interested in, antiderivative of x to the eighth plus 2x cubed minus x to the 2 thirds minus 3 over x squared. Dx. So I've written this in the silly form, and you can get it in a nicer form if you if you just realize that you know this is just a sum of powers of x that I've I've sort of put over this silly common denominator here. So okay, so so our life will be a little simpler if we write this out by splitting it up uh, into the the separate fractions. So if I do that, this is just equal to the antiderivative of well x to the eighth over x squared. That's x to the sixth. And 2x cubed over x squared is just x. So I have x, so sorry, it's 2x plus 2x. Now, OK, so x to the 2 thirds over x squared. So that's x to the 2 thirds minus 2, which is x to the minus 4 thirds. And minus 3 over x squared. So OK, so we could write that as minus 3 over x squared. Or maybe it's a little more convenient to write it as minus 3x to the minus 2 dx. So, so far I haven't really done anything, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of algebra here. OK, but now we know that we, we've, we've seen a formula for anti-differentiating uh, anti a single power of x. I mean, we know how to differentiate a single power of x, and so to do an antiderivative is just the, the inverse process. Um, and we also know that when you have the derivative of a sum, it's the sum of derivatives. And so consequently, if you have the antiderivative of a sum, it's just the sum of the antiderivatives. So we can write this out into its, into its constituent parts. So it's the antiderivative of x to the sixth dx plus the anti, now of course you don't have to do this. You could probably proceed just from this step onwards, or, uh, but, but I don't see any harm in, in actually splitting it up myself. So antiderivative of 2x dx minus, okay, x to the minus 4 thirds dx plus minus 3x to the minus 2. Dx. OK, so I just split it up into a bunch of pieces. Oh, I guess this one I sort of pulled the minus sign out, and this one I didn't, but you know, whatever. It's e either, either way. Um, OK, so now, now we just need to remember our, our formulas for, for taking the antiderivative of a power of x. So in order to do that, so when you take a derivative, the, the power goes down by 1. So if you take an antiderivative, the power will always go up by 1. So in this case, you get, so you're going to get x to the seventh. And now, when you differentiate x to the seventh, a 7 comes down in front, right? You get 7x to the sixth. So in order to get just x to the sixth, we have to also divide by that 7 there. So x to the sixth, the antiderivative is x to the seventh over 7. 2x, so that's going to give us plus 
2x squared over 2. Or if you like, you could just recognize right away that 2x is the derivative of x squared. Um, minus, OK, now we've got minus powers, ne rather negative powers. So, so that always is a little trickier to, to keep track of. So again, the same thing is true, though. You have to you add 1 to the, to the exponent. The exponent goes up by 1 when you take an antiderivative. It goes down by 1 when you take a derivative. So OK, so when you add 1 to minus 4 thirds, you get minus 1 third. So we have x to the minus 1 third. And now I have to divide by minus 1 third. When I take a derivative here, it, we get of, of x to the minus 1 third, I get minus 1 third x to the minus 4 thirds. So I need to divide by that minus 1 third. OK, and finally here, so minus 3x to the minus 2. So OK, so, so just like this first one, you, you, you might recognize that right off as the derivative of x to the minus 3. So this is plus. Oh, oh ha, ha. Uh, you, could, you could do that if you were completely confused like me. Um, so right, so x to the minus 2 it increased by 1 increases by 1. So when it increases by 1, you get minus 1, not minus 3. Oh, OK, good. So this is minus 3 times x to the minus 1 over minus 1. OK, that's much better. And if you like, right, so OK, so we could, any, any constant we add to this, it'll still be an antiderivative. OK, and now we could do a little bit of arithmetic to, to rearrange this into nicer forms if you wanted. So you could rewrite this as, say, x to the seventh over seven plus x squared plus three x to the minus one third plus three x to the minus one plus a constant. Now suppose you got here, and suppose that you know you did the same mistake that I just made, um, and you and you had accidentally thought that this was going to be a minus third power instead of a minus first power. So how would you, how, is, there, is there any way that you can prevent yourself making that mistake? Well, there actually is. So one nice thing about antiderivatives is that it's really easy to check your work. After you've computed an antiderivative, or, or something that you think is an antiderivative, you can always go back and take the derivative of the thing that you computed and check that it's equal to what you started with. So if, you, if, you're, if you're ever worried that you made a mistake, computing an antiderivative, one thing you can always do is take a derivative of what you've got at the end. So if we take a derivative here, we get x to the sixth plus 2x minus x to the minus 4 thirds minus 3x to the minus 2. OK? So that was just using our, our rule for powers one by one. And OK, so you say that out loud or write it down, and then you just check, right? So, so I said that. So that's exactly the same thing we've got right here. Yeah? So, so x to the sixth plus 2x minus x to the minus 4 thirds minus 3x to the minus 2. So one of the nicest things about antiderivatives, they can be difficult to, to figure out in the first place. But after you've got something that you think is an antiderivative, it's very easy to go back and check whether you did it correctly by taking the derivative and making sure that it matches the, 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 you know, the, the thing that you were trying to antidifferentiate at the beginning. So that's that. <laughs>